right, so oh, yes, sorry. Um, would you be able to just give an example uh, of what exactly we are learning? So, like, what, what exactly is the problem? Just intuitive. What is the intuition behind the loss? Why are we trying to optimize? Like you mentioned that it's connected to the ASB in the previous lecture. So, but I still I, I don't quite really understand what exactly we're trying to optimize. We're getting there. Okay. Uh, I this later on in the slide deck where we actually talk about examples of where the um, how that works when we get to the results section of that. I'll show you kind of what problems we're solving, how it's solving them, stuff like that. Um, as a temporary answer, one of the things that we can actually do is take the sum of like two handwritten digits, give it one handwritten digit, and say, what's the other one? And through, through the computation, what's the sense of the, 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 the one digit and the output into the neural network, it can actually hand or write you a digit that's missing. So how does it relate to, basically, I'm just trying to understand, trying to connect to the previous lecture. So you mentioned that they, these two guys, so this guy and the, the lecture that was previously there are part of the same group. So how, what is the relationship between that architecture and this architecture? You, I mean, you also mentioned that it builds up in the loss function, but I'm just trying to connect it to the previous lecture. I, I believe it's the, the, as far as I'm understanding it, and mind you, the stuff blows my mind too. <laughs> um, it's the, the, the composition of a neural network in the front and a reasoner in the back that's kind of bolted onto the back. Right. So with neural ASP, it was the neural network in the front and Klingo bolted onto the back. Right. And that, that network fed in that way. In this, we're using slash and a probabilistic circuit to feed in an output and then reason with it. So it's, the, it's that kind of neural network in the front, reason in the back architecture that's kind of the bridge, I believe, between the last paper and this paper. Is that a major idea? Yeah. So um, where is the fact? I mean, you can talk about a neural probabilist, probabilistic fact. So where is the fact? I mean, where is the constraint? Uh, quick, <laughs> I, I believe the constraint is uh, is how would just like how you would do with the neural ASP uh, when you do the uh, clean go after after the fact that you after the fact that you had the because in the neural ASP you have a image and then you use a neural network to do the prediction and then you can and then you can put it into uh, you can put the predictions into the um, into my Klingo. However, however, I that was my mistake. I should have put one in the slide. But in the slash, in uh, in this, they call it the slash uh, thing. It's basically think of Klingo, but with any other kind of like constraints. So go back to a few slides uh, into the a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Here. These these are also these are this becomes the probabilistic uh, constraints that you can then add into into Klingo, but it is now called uh, slash slash. Yes. So the the um, the constraints is like Klingo, but you have now these uh, yes probability. probability like you can do this kind of constraints, and apparently you can multiply them together into a rule. So one of the advantages is that with missing data, you can make a prediction. Is it right? Yes. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry if I cut you off, but yeah. yes, because especially because of the PX uh, given C, um, the thing is, and if you go back a little bit to the family of the probabilistic. Uh, so here, imagine all of these are pixels that you can then, you know, sample. Some of these can be missing. Um, and then you can, you can basically try to, uh, it's basically like imagine it's p of x one all the way to x two hundred fifty six, where some of your some of your data is missing. You can still you can still model from that. So I'll just uh, maybe put it in layman terms: if you're missing some pixel data, but you have some there, you can predict the color. Yes. Is it right? Okay. And which will be which which will which for this particular 
of which with this particular paper, they show it the results that um, it is generalizable because of that. So now that you guys give you like a thorough, a thorough uh, explanation of MPPs and PCs, uh, now we'll just uh, discuss a novel DTPO called Sarge. So, so now that we basically build this foundation, we create slash that can efficiently combine MPPs with the logic program. So this DPPO acts similar to the function weight symbol, where we basically can just um, efficiently combine several paradigms into one. And so, so the point of uh, this DPPL is, is that uh, slash is representing the first ever efficient and scalable programming language, where you can integrate uh, probabilistic logical programming with uh, neural representation and probabilistic applications. And what this allows us to do is that we can integrate all kinds of um, probability, probability estimates that isn't just only uh, class efficiency. Uh, so essentially, so, uh, slash will be consisting of a logical program where it contains a set of facts and logical statements that help us like define the state of a world or an underlying task. And an answer is, and the ASP module is used to combine with the MVPs and with the logical program. Um, so when you're doing a logical query about the input data, uh, with the input data being the logical program and probability estimates that you obtain from the MVP, uh, the ASP module will then produce a probability estimate about the truth value of that query. And so when we train in slash, we officially perform in a batch wise end to end fashion where we basically integrate all the parameters of the modules into a single block structure. So, so this figure exemplifies the building blocks of MP and uh, slash for a specific instantiation called slash attention. So the purpose of this instantiation is to do the task of set prediction from images. And as you can see, these on um, an MPP, you have a slot encoder as well as a bunch of mindset some PCs. So the slot encoder is basically shared across all the MPPs that you can see here, and the PCs of each MPP model is a separate category of attributes. So you can see on the top, the, the, the top PC will just be um, caring about the category of colors, like red and blue, and the bottom one will be uh, caring about the categories of shapes, circles, and squares. So what this reveals to us is that we can have each MPP model the uh, joint distribution over slot Encodings and object values, which has the color output. So, when you query the MPP, you can get types of probability estimations like the traditional attribute probability. And lastly, by using the logic program, you can then predefine a set of statements. So, like for example, when we have an object of assessing a specific set of attributes, like you can see here in the query, um, if we query if, um, if, 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 if a certain image contains a large 